and I want to use my staging policy that I've just defined, right? My, that I just applied or published today to me. So I want to apply this and test my deployment YAML file. <laughs> Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anais and this is 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Now, if you're watching this video, you likely are fairly new to GitOps, Kubernetes, or you want to improve your skills in the cloud native Kubernetes ecosystem. Now, there are several tools that help us do that, that help make our lives easier writing Kubernetes manifests. One of those tools I talked about before, which is called DayTree. No, day three helps us to prevent Kubernetes misconfigurations from reaching our production environment. It basically allows us to define a set of policies, depending on the Kubernetes version that we are using, then check that those policies are true within our Kubernetes manifests before we deploy the manifests. Meaning if you're not 100% sure what has to be present within your Kubernetes manifests to be secure, to be safely defined, you can use Daytree to check what actually has to go into Kubernetes manifests. And then also make sure that over the long term, when you're defining different deployments, different resources, that those policies are actually kept and uh, are present within your manifests. Now, if you're watching this channel, you likely know that I'm a huge fan of GitOps. What is GitOps? <laughs> and what does it have to do with day three right now? Well, GitOps is the practice of defining all of our resources within Git. Git is our single point of truth. If you're completely new to GitOps, I I suggest you to check out a blog post I wrote a while ago, which is introduction to GitOps and the ecosystem of the GitOps space, let's say, which is linked down there below. Uh, in the description. Now, if you're using GitOps best practices, we have several benefits. The first one is that we know what changes take place over time. So if something breaks, we can track back the changes that have happened. Second of all, we can ensure that we are sharing our configurations with team members accurately. Meaning instead of telling people which buttons to press, we tell them which files and configurations to use. Also, it's a lot easier to see the difference within the YAML configurations or other configurations defined in Git versus the changes that took place within a UI and then actually explore those changes and make sure that people know about them and click the right options. And lastly, defining all of our resources within Git allows us to actually define different resources for our different environments. So we can customize our resources a lot easier and keep them consistent within different environments and for different environments. Now, day three just launched a new feature called policies as code. Now, if you're familiar with infrastructure as code, where we define our infrastructure with a code, such as with Terraform, check out my previous video if you're completely new to infrastructure as code and you're curious about that. Similarly to that, with policies as code, we can define all of our Kubernetes policies that we want to have in place within our Kubernetes manifests within our YAML files and push them to Git to keep track of them within Git. Let me show you how. Now, like always, I have a written version that covers everything that I'm showcasing here in this video. If you prefer the written version, link below to the blog post. So here you can also find a link to the previous video. You can also find the previous video linked up there again. Now, how does it work? I'm going to walk you through everything that we're going to do and how it works behind the scenes. First of all, we want to have the tree downloaded. So if you go to the Datree website, you can see that you can install the tree with the simple CLI command. Now, then we want to go to the documentation. You can see the different options. If you've used Datree just a while ago and you've not yet updated it within the past week or so, and you want to access this feature, I highly suggest you to update your CLI, so your Datree CLI as well, even if you've already installed it earlier. Now we want to access the UI next. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna copy this command. We're gonna open up our terminal. I'm gonna use this VS code file the entire time. And we're just gonna run the test command that uses a task file from the tree. As you can see right now, there are 30 rules set of which 24 pass and six do not pass. Now these are the default, default policies that I have in place. Now this link allows me to open up my 
uh, policies section, my UI. So as you can see here in the UI, I can toggle and untoggle the different policies. Right now I have all 30 policies set. It would not make sense if I would be allowed to change the policies in the UI and use the policies as code feature. So if I were to use the policies as code feature right now, here are my default policies set, the, poli the policies from the UI. So if I say the tree publish default policies, it will tell me it failed because I must enable default policy, uh, the policy as code mode within the UI. So I must enable the policies as code within the UI. So for that, I go to my settings in my account and here I can see the policy checks that I have done within the past monthly period, then the version of Kubernetes that I want to use, and then my policy as code section. I want to toggle this, I want to enable it. And then you can download the current policies that you have set in the UI. So if you've defined your policies before within the UI, you can now download the exact same policy so you don't have to cross compare of like, is this the same policy that I've set earlier in the UI? No, this file actually showcases all the policies you've set in the UI. So once you download it, you will have it in your downloads folder and you can use it. These are the same as the default policies that I have set here. So these are my default policies that are enabled right now. This is the file that comes that we've just downloaded. I just named it differently. So here is the API version Then the policies. It's named default policy. It's set to true. This is the default policy, meaning if we test, run the day tree test command and we don't specify a policy that we want to use, since we can set multiple policies, it will just use the default policy. We can also specify that we want to use a different policy that's not the default policy. So you can have separate files, separate policies, code files defined, which makes, makes it also easier than through the UI because you have all your different files set right here uh, as your policy as code. And that has several different benefits as detailed earlier. So here are all my 30 policies, right? I don't want to use all of them. For me, I modify this into my staging environment. So right now I'm just going to show you how to set up, for example, a policy as code file for your staging environment. As you can see, I have a few less policies here and I want to apply it. Now I'm going to apply this to my account. I'm using my account with my access token. I can share my account with my access token. This is my token here with other people or using it in a CAC pipeline by setting this access token as an environment variable. So for instance, I have here my D3 account and I can access it through different accounts. Um, like I can set the access the policies that I've set within the D3 account through my CICD pipeline, through different accounts and so on. So we are all using the same policies that are defined centrally, but we can all access from that central point. That's how it works. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply my modified policies, right? I'm going to apply that. So I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to say D3 publish what we just seen publish and then the policies modified.yaml and I'm just going to go ahead and I publish this and now it should change it within the UI. So if I go over here and I go back to my policies and I refresh, as you can see now, instead of having 30 different rules, I just have 18 different rules. So I can open this up and I can see my different rules and now I can't toggle and untoggle the status of those policies, right? They are all defined there. Now, Let's go back to the YAML file that actually defines these policies. Similar to the UI, you can reference a GitHub account by just saying at and then the username of a person, as well as providing links to different resources for those different identifiers. Now the identifiers are right now set by the tree that allows the tree to know which policies you want to have in place. So don't change those identifiers. Now, that I have this in place, I want to check my deployment YAML file. I want to make sure is this actually correct. This deployment file, <laughs> YAML file um, will apply or run my application, my container in a pod uh, in Kubernetes, in my Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster set up, you can either start a new account on Sivo where you can spin up Kubernetes clusters really quickly. You will get $250 worth of credit upon sign up. Or if you don't want to sign up to a platform, you can just use kind 
um, do you need this in Docker, which is a class that it runs as a Docker container, and you just through install and then kind create cluster cluster name, and you have a new cluster set up. So right now I'm connected to my Sivo Kubernetes cluster. So kubectl get nodes, and I have all my nodes here, and then I want to create a new namespace. Create namespace test. So I created a test namespace, and before I apply those two files, my service and my deployment, I want to check my deployment. So I'm going to go ahead and say dtree test and then manifest manifest directory, the deployment. And I want to use my staging policy that I've just defined, right? My, that I just applied or published to dtree. So I want to apply this and test my deployment YAML file. And as you can see, four out of my 18 policies fail right now. So which ones failed? All of the ones regarding resource limitations, they actually failed. I have not defined which, how many resources, how much resource my deployment can actually utilize. So we are gonna go ahead, and I didn't want to split my terminal. <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna fix this. Now, luckily I looked at this earlier and I've already fixed it. So you can find all the different fixes and everything <laughs> within my blog post. So we're gonna select those resources and we're gonna change the resources in that YAML file. Now the blog post details how you can have different policies for different environments. So we've also used a production environment policy within the blog post. So as you can see, I have my resource defined and now let's go ahead and run this again. I think this was this. Like that. Okay. So <laughs> um, we're going to run day three test and we're going to test it again with the same policies. And as you can see, now all of our rules pass 18 out of 18. And now we are confident in how our resource is set up, how our Kubernetes manifest is set up, and that we are not introducing misconfigurations in our environment, in, our, in this case, in our staging environment. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we can apply those resources. As you can see here, I have all of my resources right now. They are running already. So we can do a port forward to actually access the application. So kubectl and then port forward and it's a namespace test. And now we can open up a browser and localhost. You can also write localhost instead, localhost. And it's opening up our application, as you can see here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give the Day3 GitHub repository a star. It would mean a lot to them and to me. If you enjoyed this, if you enjoy the tool itself. Also, if you prefer the written version, the blog post is linked below. If you prefer a short version, neat to the point of which commands to use, check out the Daytree documentation link below as well. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Let me know what kind of tools you would like me to look at or talk about. I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.